supposed to be an artist. So be an artist. What is that? I wrote it. Freedom in thought! Freedom in thought! Come on! Freedom in thought! Freedom in thought! What I want to ask you first, Francis, is why Emily? of the Bronte sisters, you know, she's very different from the others, isn't she? Yeah, I guess I, ident I identified with her when I was like 15, I read Wuthering Heights for the first time, and there was just something about her that I really identified with. You know, she was so much her own person, and yet she was quite different. She was an introvert, wandering on the moors. I mean, it's a 15 year old, <laughs> you know, who wouldn't love that? And I just think there's something about her that's so kind of authentic and real, and I felt like that maybe there was something in that that could really speak to you know, people today, young women today. Yeah. I mean, she has sort of like Bronte fans. There is, there is one sort of branch, isn't there, that's very kind of goes towards Emily. Yeah. Sort of, the, yeah. and tends to be almost like the ones that prefer the gothic side of... Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's true. People tend to be the Team Charlotte or Team <laughs> <laughs> Emily, I think. I'm actually Team both. I love them both in different ways, but I guess I identify a little more strongly with... Poor no, Anne, Emily. really. I was going to say Anne as well. Well, here's Anne. the interesting thing about <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Please tell me. No, that um, you know the Bronte's got so much heat for writing those novels, Jane Eyre, Wuthering mm. Heights, and Tenant of Wildfell Hall. That um, Charlotte actually suppressed one of the publications of Anne's book, so it never kind of really um, reached. Did she really? Yeah, really as a protective. Charlotte as a protective mechanism, because they were just getting so much heat oh, no. from these novels. I didn't know um, that. Yeah. There you go. That's a, yeah, you go. <laughs> More knowledge. <laughs> All that research, finally. I can. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was going to ask you, with research, is it harder to do for Emily because of the fact that she, there isn't so much known about her, or does that make it easier because you can bring more of yourself to it? I don't know if it's harder or, or easier, actually. I, I just, I enjoy the process. I enjoyed reading all the books because love reading books, uh, all of the biographies that Francis sent over and it was nice to have that solid kind of reference point um, but then the Bible quote unquote very much is the script and so that is always you know the main point of reference and the, that will be you know that's what I relied on the whole way through um, but it's exciting and there are and there's 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 room for interpretation there's room for um, imagination and that's the whole beauty to me of the script is that it kind of it, it is, it's very free and there's a real yeah, a real sense of okay, we can we can run we can run with this and let's let's go all the way and push this as far as we can. I think it's exciting. Mm. Yeah. I mean, were you a fan of Wuthering Heights before, or did you really have to sort of read it prior to signing up to this? I no, I'd, I'd read it before. I'd read it before. I mean, I studied English, so I'd read it before. But I had to. I actually found it weirdly harder to read the, the, with my kind of academic English brain, as because I was trying to analyse it too much. And actually, it doesn't work. You have to just again with oh, this film. You know what I mean? I yeah. felt like I was tr trying too hard to pin it down. Like, what does she mean by this? And interpret. And actually, once you kind of let it happen to you in a way, you kind of experience the book in that way. I think that's kind of what I feel about the film as well. You just have to live it and and just go with it. And I think it's yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. yeah. I don't know if that's puppy cluck. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I think it's like an, it's an emotional experience. Yeah, exactly. Visceral experience exactly. reading Wuthering Heights, yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, one thing I found really interesting was the costumes. I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, for you, is putting on a sort of period costume, does that help you with the character or just the time period or? No, not at all. Uh, it does, of course. <laughs> it does help massively and also, but it also didn't feel, it didn't feel like a costume, which is the those, you know, the, the, when when it, when costume design works really well, it doesn't feel like you're putting on a costume. It feels like you're putting on your clothes, and that's what was so. I keep looking at the dress because it's yeah. right there. <laughs> but it felt really, it felt like second skin, and that's why Michael is so good at his job because there's a historical accuracy there, but there's also a lot of fluidity in the movement. And I didn't ever feel kind of stuck unless it it was it was linked to the story in some way. And, yeah, you know, we kind of Emily was dressed in a certain way because she was trying to be kind of you know, yeah. held together by her sister or her father or whatever. So yeah, mm. it, it was it was yeah, sorry, I went off on a tangent, but it was it was great. It was the costume design is obviously very important, yeah. Yeah, and Michael was trying to make it real. And yeah. that's a great thing about his costumes is that they, they look, feel they lived look in. yeah, they feel yeah. lived in and they look like clothes rather than costumes, mm -hmm. I think. So you start to believe they're real people. Yeah. I mean, can I ask you about the the dress? The um, with sort of like it's supposed to be lightning bolts. Yes. Yeah. So keep pointing to it. Yeah. People can. <laughs> no, I told Michael about that story that she <coughs> had gone into Bradford with her sister and Ellen Nussie, I think, and Miss Nussie. Miss Nussie. <laughs> and she had picked 
this um, a kind of voile that had thunderbolts on it and everyone's just like, are you kidding us? Like, and, and she was so pleased with it and apparently she looked amazing in it. So um, Michael loved that story and so mm. he designed this dress for Emma that uh, just kind of be became very iconic for your character, yeah. I think. And it's, very, it's very symbolic, isn't it? I feel yeah. like it yeah, makes sense for Emily. Yeah. I mean, was there a scene for you that, what was the hardest scene to film, either emotionally or physically? You know, I kept thinking when you were rolling down the hill, I was like, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> that was the last thing we shot as well. Can you imagine? That was the last scene. We ended up I was like, like <laughs> my ribs hurt. Please it do I have to? I so this? sick. <laughs> It was great also. They no, were such good yeah, sports though. Was, They're like, fun. could you just roll down this hill in a corset? She's like, yeah, I'll give sure. that a try. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> just roll, roll down it. Um, I can't remember a specific, I remember certain things, and there, there are some things that are in the film um, also, which I remember filming, I remember the um, mask. Oh, when you um, smash it? What, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that I was like I, I think I did it three times like I can't do this anymore it was like oh, too yeah. much but oh but my the, god were you devastated when we cut no it? no well yeah no no totally yeah. devastated no no but it was there were so many it was so charged there were so many scenes that were very charged so I'm being oh, I don't want to go on too actory and be too actory about it but it, no there was there were many hard scenes but it was always fun to do because yeah you have something real to get your teeth stuck into so it yeah felt, it felt yeah I mean, I find that the relationship between the sisters is fascinating, mm. you know, because I think, you know, everybody knows that, you know, I know we see the glimpse of uh, Bramwell's portrait where everybody knows that uh, yeah, and cool. they know what the girls wrote, but don't really know anything else. It's quite nice to see what they could have been like. I mean, yeah. did you look into that a lot, sort of the relationship yeah. between the sisters? I mean, I think there was a kind of a power struggle. Mm. I mean from both of them, from Emily and Charlotte, because I think Emily was slightly dependent on Charlotte in s social situations. Mm. And um, so I think that, you know, that relationship, you know, had a lot of push pull and yet Charlotte was like the organizer, which must have been a little bit oppressive and always the one who was like, we need to find some way to support ourselves. Mm. And whereas Emily was much more kind of, I think, in her imagination and her creativity. So I think the push and pull of that, I thought was very helpful for this story. Mm. I think in terms of Emily trying to find out who she was and connect to who she, she really yeah. is, yeah. Because it was Charlotte, wasn't it, that wrote a, a book that was sort of Emily's biography, her kind of version. She sanitised everything, didn't she, sort of thing? With Shirley. And sort of afterwards. Just, uh, destroyed letters and things. Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I, we were saying uh, on one of the interviews is that after Wuthering Heights came out, you know, people were disturbed by that novel and they thought, who the hell wrote this? And that's when they thought it was a guy. And they, she just, they just got so much heat from that book that... Charlotte spent a lot of time kind of damage controlling everything. She had a biography written that was just like, look, these Brontes are really normal, just like us. And yeah. Shirley, she wrote a whole book making her sister in Shirley, like someone that you could, you know, that was much more reasonable than probably the real Emily Bronte. And I don't blame her for doing that. I think it was actually probably, they were feeling a lot of heat from, mm. from mm. these moments. But yeah. I mean, which is interesting, I think. Yeah. We forget that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is that's that, that something hard to kind of get across the the relationship between the sisters and you know knowing that some of the versions out there aren't true, is that you know to pick your own version of what it's going to be? Well, I mean, that's what uh, that's what the whole process is about. We figure out those intricacies and those details together, and it's not it's not my choice. It's all you know. We we figure it out. We figure out the beats together, and I think. There's something really nice also about, again, because this family is sort of shrouded in a lot of mystery and a lot of interpretation, it's nice to just humanise them and to have the kind of the good, the bad and the ugly of just being a sibling to someone and what that is and what that entails and the defensiveness and the mechanisms that you have and the fear and the comfort that they can provide. And it's it's nice to go through all of those beats, isn't it, and see, you know, and draw that out and, and curate the craft that. Um, yeah, that they weren't saints, they were just people. Yeah. Just yeah. people trying to make their life work, you know, and then from that comes these amazing novels. But this this film really is just an imagining of what could be. Yeah. And I think they would love that, that people took their lives and kind of imagined, or oh, perhaps it could be like this or that, and yeah. put a go gothic element into it. I think they would have probably loved that. Yeah. I mean, my last question I've got to ask, the Yorkshire weather. Surely that must have been a challenge for both Are of them. Are you from Yorkshire? <laughs> no, I was up there the other day just after seeing the film and I thought, it's really cold here and it's a bit wet. That must have been so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the part of the charm though, isn't it? It's part of the world. And I we love I mean I loved it that yeah. I, I know you do too, so yeah, it's really evocative and, and very 
yeah. It's its whole it's, world, it's its own world. Yeah. And like to be there and shoot on those moors and to, you know, and some days were very cold and windy and a lot. Yeah. And, um, but it still was so evocative, I think. And it was lovely that the actors got to be in the real environment. And, yeah, and react to it's it. Important. Yeah. Yeah. It's always when I see things like that, I always wonder whether you've got eight layers underneath because it's pouring <laughs> yeah. with rain and you must be freezing in those heat packs. No, yeah, the, that's true. Oh, there are a few heat packs going on, but it's, yeah. it's, you have to be light. There was a lot of running as well, so we had. To, I had. I was just in, you know, my costume layers, so it was good. Good fun. <laughs> <laughs>